Hi, what's going on guys? My name is Enzo and today we're going to learn how to code your own cryptocurrency, just like Bitcoin, Ethereum or Doge. Let's dive in. So how is the cryptocurrency built underneath? A cryptocurrency is often referred as token because it's a token that is fungible. You will always be able to trade one token for another and both of them will have the same value, just as fiat money, right? If you take one euro or one dollar, it's worth exactly the same than any other. For that, there has been one token standard developed by the Ethereum Foundation that is called the ERC20. If we look at this page, we'll see that a token can represent many different things. It could be reputation points in an online platform. It could be lottery tickets. It may be a lot of things, right? But in order for this token to, to be usable uh, by many parties, we actually need to implement a standard, an interface that tells us all the different functions that it is expected for this token to have. The Ethereum Foundation has written this document that details all the interface this token needs to implement. And once we will have implemented this interface, our token will be ready to be used just as any other token uh, out there. Let's see how everything we just talked translates to code. You can see here at the top this import line that is very important because it will be the base upon we will be building. This ERC20 contract comes from the Open Zeppelin contracts library. Open Zeppelin is a company within the crypto ecosystem that provides many different smart contracts already built in and secure with the best industry standards in order for you to build upon them. In our case, we are interested by the ESC20 contract as it's the one that we will be implementing. If you look at the Open Zeppelin docs, you will see all the different contracts that they provide as well as their full API. Next, we'll be implementing our custom token. For that, we need a constructor within our contract. For now, it will be empty and the constructor needs to call the ERC20 constructor to pass in some values. These values are two. First, the name of our token and then its symbol. As a name, we'll be using my token, and as symbol, it will be called, for example, MTN. Then, of course, we need this contract to extend the base ERC20 contract for it to be valid. Now that we have this, let's take a look at this base contract. This base contract actually implements all the different functions and properties that is expected in a token to satisfy the ERC20 standard. This is the total supply, the name, the symbol, being able to get the balance of a certain uh, address and being able to transfer tokens around. Thanks to this base, the token already is a cryptocurrency as it is. However, we might want to extend it based on our use cases. Right now we could deploy this contract and it would be a valid token ready to be used. But let's see how we could, for example, mint an initial supply whenever we deploy the token. So the token supply doesn't start at zero and we have some tokens to start playing around. For that, we are going to go back to our base contract and look for a function that allow us to mint a certain amount of tokens. Here it is. This function allow us to mint certain amount of tokens for a certain address. Let's use that. If we go back in, inside our constructor, we'll be able to call mint, passing in the message sender as well as a certain amount as an initial supply, let's say 1 million. 
Now this would be enough to have 1 million of tokens assigned to the address that deploy this contract. The next steps depend on your use case. If your token has a total supply minted on deploy and that's it, you're pretty much over at this point. However, you might want a token that can be minted later on and can also be burned. Let's come back to the Open Zeppelin website and look at the full ERC20 API. You will find here a set of extensions that might help you build in your use case. As an example, the ERC20 burnable allows you to add two new functions, burn and burn from, that will effectively allow you to implement burning mechanisms in your token. In order to add this burnable extension, it's as simple as copying the import, pasting at the top of your contract, and then extending this new contract. Now your token is burnable, and you can call the burn functions from wherever you want. Please be aware that functions such as burn are exposed as public by default, meaning that anybody can burn their tokens at any point. You might not want that. You might only want certain addresses to be able to burn, or you might want to only be able to burn under a certain case. That's up to you to implement based on your use case. And that's everything I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments if this has been helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And to the next video, keep coding, keep smiling.